Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be back filming and bringing you this video. A lot has changed since January, you guys. I got a puppy, so I'm a mom now. Hopefully she doesn't start making noise. Like, she sleep right now, so hopefully she doesn't start making noise and hopefully I can film this video for you guys. But it has been very exciting this point in my life, um, having a dog and just living my best life out here. So yeah, um, today's video is actually a request from one of my subscribers about being a mobile lash tech. She had some questions when it came to that. Now I have limited experience with this, but I have done it before and I am excited to bring you some tips and some tips you probably never even thought about when it comes to being a mobile lash tech. All right, so off the bat, you guys, we want to establish what we're doing. Um, I know that when I decided to try to be a mobile lash tech, I wanted to expand my services within my business. And I was already doing makeup and lashes at the same time. And I thought that adding a mobile service on it would benefit me. Now, I did find there were a lot of pros and cons. But you want to establish, if you are doing this, to... Um, be the mobile lash tech in your area or if you don't want to service people um out of your home i know some people do that or if you don't have a studio this will be a great option for you so some key things right off the bat that i want to point out is you have to make it you have to make it worth it for you if that makes sense so we're talking about finances right off the bat you guys um, finances is really important because when it comes to being a mobile lash tech you have to worry about more than just if you have a studio if you have um, a place that you can do the lashes and the clients come to you there's much more liability involved so we want to make sure that we are compensated for those things so you have to consider your time your car wear and tear on your car your body because I'm telling you like it's not as easy to pack up your stuff from the comfort of the area that you do lashes in and go to another location someone's house or what have you and it might not be the most comfortable for your body so you want to make sure that you're taking care of your body so you want to make sure that you are including that in your financial um, assessment when you are figuring out how to price this so one of the key things you have to understand when people are requesting you to be a mobile lash tech for them is that people are paying for the convenience so a convenience fee to me is not fifty dollars or what have you it would actually make sense for you to double the price of your lash set for it to make sense because people are paying for that convenience they are paying for you to come to them instead of them come to you so i would i made the mistake of charging fifty dollars which is why i say that when i tested out being a mobile lash tech and it was just not worth it for me you also have to consider the tools that you have to take so you have to take your bed or you have to take um, a chair and you also have to make sure that you have all your products you have to have a case for them you have to have so much more you have to remember so much more and it is not worth it to just be charging minimum to come to that person when you have to pack up all of your things so make sure i would say guys i know it might seem a little shocking that especially if you are charging up there um like for me i charge like 200 for my lowest set and to double that you would feel like it would be um, a lot of money but like i said the convenience fee um of it all is going to help you when it comes to like putting back money for tax taxes and all of your other supplies your gas you have to put money aside for your car and those are the things that you want to think about you have to think about more than just the service itself so you want to start um thinking about those extra little things that add on and that at, at the most part those are the things that cost you money those are things that you have to put the bill for so no you want to make it just as smooth for you so what i would recommend is you go down and you write down everything that it takes that means you need to write down your supply list you need to write down um how much gas it takes uh to fill up your tank and you have to think about the area that you want to provide this service in are you just staying in your hometown are you traveling far or you have to think about these things before you just decide to place a financial number on the fee 
for um, being the mobile lash tech, all right? So I hope that makes sense. We want to get an overall view of what it is that we have to bring, what we are providing for the client, and then we have to place a number on that. And I need you guys to make it worth your while because you can be successful in this. You just have to make sure that you are being compensated correctly and you can't be afraid to put that price on there. And it is a luxury service. You have to, to remember that nobody really needs lashes. Lashes are a luxury service. So when people need to get lashes done and they need you to come to them, they should already have an idea that they need to pay for it. Right, so now that we've got out the financial we we could kind of narrow down what we want our travel fee to be what we want our lash uh service fees to be um what our sets are and and all now your time now it's time for you to promote those things right so i'm gonna run through my top tips of the things that you should think about bringing, the things that you might have not thought that you needed, and some safety tips for you guys to be safe because I know I'm assuming here that I'm talking to the majority women and I think as a woman, you if you are considering doing this, you have to be very vigilant when it comes to your safety. So right now we're gonna start off with our top tips of what you need to bring and then we'll circle back around to the safety portion. So on your booking site, if you have a booking site, if you don't, I do strongly recommend that you have a booking site. If not a booking site, a website will do. I have both. I just attach the booking site to the website and it makes it so much easier for the client. So you need to have a section on there for booking services for mobile uh, lash check, whether if that's reaching out to you or if that is everything that you wanna put on the booking site, you can do that as well. But you wanna make sure that you're covering your tracks. You wanna make sure that you're laying out your rules. So um, whether that's no children, no pets if you're allergic, those sort of things, like you need to establish those boundaries with your client so they know and then they won't try it because remember you're walking into a situation where it's not your home or it's not your location so you have a little less control so you want to make sure that you're laying out all the rules and just in case if a client tries to dispute you have everything there so the bank will most likely side with you okay all right so um I would say through the booking site that you would need to place your waivers on the site. So you guys, let's just talk about waivers real quick. I am such a fan of waivers and waivers will save you so much time and it saves you and your business in the case of if a client, like I said, would like to dispute or if something happens and the client is trying to place blame on you and it's not your fault, your, your waivers definitely cover you. So you can put your waiver on the website um, or your booking site when it comes to that. I am a fan of having a physical copy that people need to sign. So when you think about it, think about it like you're going to the doctor's office and you have to sign all these papers, you have to sign all these things and in your mind it puts into it that this is a serious um, thing. So that is why I'm a, a huge advocate for having physical flyers uh, physical waivers i'm an advocate for having physical waivers for your clients to sign and i provide those so you would print those out and you would take it to your client so that way they you have their physical copy and their physical signature for something and it still puts into the mindset and a lot of my clients have told me that they actually appreciate that because it lets them know that you are the professional and that you take your craft very seriously all right so um, I would say glues is gonna be your most important thing. Glues, your glues, your tweezers, and your um, lashes are gonna be the most important thing that you take, but especially your glues, because I know a lot of people like to work with one glue. I recommend that you take three, and one of those needs to be a sensitive adhesive, just in case your client um, is sensitive, and you might not know that until you get there but also you need a slower drying adhesive and a fast drying adhesive because for one, you need to take your hydrometer, 
which tells you the humidity of the room. So that way you know that you can either use a faster drying adhesive if the um, humidity in the room calls for it or you can use a slower drying one if the humidity calls for it and sensitive just to be on the safe side. So always take three glues, take an abundance of tweezers and make sure that you have them in a carrying case to support and make sure that they don't get damaged and ear lashes in a case. I will place a picture of what I use to um, put my lash tiles in and it definitely keeps them from getting um, smushed and keeps them uh, from being contaminated as well. So I will post a picture up here somewhere so you guys can see that. They are photo case boxes and I get them from Michaels and they have a big case of like 12 and then they have another one I think that has 24 in it. So it's a great investment for that and just in case if you like to keep your client's lashes separated then you can place uh their lash tile with their lashes in one of those as well all right so it's a great investment um tapes now tapes is another thing that you want to take in abundance of so i would take um some sensitive tape so i'm gonna place a picture of the next care sensitive tape it's blue tape it's really expensive but honestly it's really good because if patches don't work or you don't like patches um, you could always use that tape and it's pretty comfortable on all clients and you also want to realize that some people are sensitive or allergic to certain um, adhesives found on lash tapes so that's why you want to take some different tapes you might want to take the microphone tape that you can cut up and use that and just take some regular tape as well so that way you can tape up and isolate and do all that and you have something comfortable for your client also don't forget the patches because some people are sensitive and they might need that um, eye patch underneath to help with that all right so those are the things that you want to take And also let's get into apps for mileage so um, QuickBooks if you are self-employed QuickBooks has one that is connected to the QuickBooks and you will have to type in your mileage and how much um, with by the state and how they walk you through all of that basically <laughs> but you put your mileage in and you turn the app in on whenever you are going to set location to perform the service and it will tell you how much and it will record it for you and also if you do your accounting and your booking through there it also just works it all out for you when it comes to tax time but there's also an abundance of other apps that you can use as well or you can just manually keep track of your um, mileage or if you don't want to worry about mileage at all make sure you place a flat rate in that um deposit for their lash service so that way you are getting compensated for your gas and you're getting compensated for your mileage all right so this is the most important part of this video you guys so here are some safety tips that i have come up with and I, also you should check your um local um city in your area for just some rights that you might want to learn about when it comes to um, being in other people's houses or spaces and, and what can happen what can't happen but also you need to empower yourself and that's why you need to have those rules you need to have those boundaries with clients so I want to start off by saying like I'm assuming like I said all of us are pretty much women here so if you are going to a client's house and she has her boyfriend or his friends over or whatever like men over then Make sure you have that boundary in your waiver so that way that um, you're protected. You want to make sure that you're protected at all times. So if you feel uncomfortable when um, you go to your client's house and it doesn't feel right in your stomach, please listen to that. Please don't bypass your intuition. Like you know when something is um, for you or not for you. You know when you feel, um, don't just don't doubt the feeling is what I'm saying guys, don't doubt the feeling. We're not gonna get too deep into to that, but don't doubt the feeling. When you pull up and you're not comfortable, don't do it. You have every right to refuse the service and refund her, right? 
All right, so also you need to share your location if you have an iPhone, share your location with your family, your friends, whoever, get the Apple ID tag. So I would get an Apple ID tag and I would put it in my car. So um, just in case, I would put it under the seat of my car and just in case if something were to happen to you god forbid but if something were to happen to you then people could find you through your car or whatever like you would just leave the apple tag under your car and remember to share your location with your friends your family everywhere take pictures if you have to and um Make sure you get a little birdie keychain. So I'll take a picture of that. My best friend got me one of those and I take it whenever I travel, but it is so loud. Like it's an alarm, but it's so loud. You could hear it for a long, like I forgot how many, I think you could hear it up to like almost a mile, but it's so loud. So you can take one of those, make sure you take your pepper spray, take your, um, tools if you need them wink wink um if you are licensed to carry like pew pew like take it with you put it in your car like you okay so here's the thing you are responsible for yourself you are no one is really going to tell you how to run this business but yourself no one is going to tell you how to make the rules and set the rules you don't allow other people to dictate um what you want to do in your business what you need to do in your business you need to be in control at all times when it comes to doing this although you're the one providing the service you are the one who if this is not going to go how you want it to go then you just don't perform perform the service right it's all about respecting yourself and respecting your clients but you want to have that open and honest communication make sure you are doing everything for your safety and make sure that you're bringing everything that you need for a professional um outlook on your business you and your business and you just have to just make sure that you are taking the correct steps for yourself you guys so make sure that you look into your laws again and make sure that you know what you are um capable of doing and never underestimate people <laughs> and just make sure you go and you slay it and you kill it and that you have um, a good experience and I think really bringing the waivers to physically sign and physically like say that there are not going to be x amount of people in the the um the home or wherever you're doing the service so that way you feel comfortable just make sure whatever you do just make sure that you are safe my biggest tip to you guys is just to make sure and know that you are worth it make sure that you are charging accordingly make sure that you are showing up more professional and just from a place of knowing that you are in control of this situation i know it's hard to go into other people's spaces and to um feel like you can't do certain things but this is your business and they are paying for your service so if they want your service it's going to go like xyz and that's what you need to met, let be known and just take care of yourself you guys like bring those tools with you bring do whatever you have to do to make sure that you maintain your safety like even if you have to bring someone to sit in the car with you like do that like get one of your friends to pay one of your friends to do it or just you know find someone who will like come slide through and check on you make sure you send the locations do all those things and honestly i think that this is a good thing to get into um i don't know many mobile lash techs who are like that go to in like my area but i feel like if someone were to start doing that and really like you know market themselves as that person like I think you would really have a good chance like no matter where you are and no matter what your goals are even if you're doing it just to get enough um finances to be able to get you a building or a suite whatever it is you guys like keep that in the forefront of your mind when you are showing up every day and you'll get to your goals in no time all right so my little puppy has come in she has woke up let me see if i can pick her up come on mama Ah, look at that. 
so this is medusa you guys this is my baby and i'm so obsessed all right so that is it for this video you guys thank you for watching and i hope you like share and subscribe this video to all your friends and if you have any other requested videos or anything you would like for me to talk about even went down to mindset you guys please just drop it in the comments or keep hitting me up in my dms on instagram i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you on our next video all right bye